Hi everyone. So let me start this video by first introducing myself. This is Ashnat Kothari here. I am a qualified associate actually. I have cleared 14 actual exams out of the possible 15 and have cleared all of these in the first attempt. I have also secured all India rank in two papers, CT6 and SP5. I have been teaching for you know more than seven years now. Uh, started when I was second year in my college. On the professional work front, uh, corporate side, I have experience of working in PNC insurance sector. I had previously worked with AXA Excel. I'm a graduate in economic honors, and I also was the BSc department topper in my college uh, from Calcutta University. So that was a brief introduction for ones who are watching our video for the first time. So in this particular video, we are going to be discussing the tentative solutions for CM1 paper A which had come in IFOA April 2023 session. Now, before we get started discussion of the paper, let me just inform all of you that the new live batches for IFOA September 2023 and IIA November 2023 session is starting from May 7. Admissions are open for it. Do keep in mind, you just have one single batch for each term for each exam. Classes will be available in live online mode, in live offline, Currently, our offline center is in Kolkata and in pre-recorded mode as well. All the students who join us do get a chance or rather do get access, complete access to all the pre-recorded content. And along with that, they have the option to attend the live classes either in offline or online form, whichever is convenient for them as per their availability. We would be creating study groups wherein we share the weekly tasks to ensure that all students be it ones who are currently studying in the college, be it ones who are working, have something of a target, you know, so that they can plan their studies accordingly and they always have the constant push or let's say external motivation to be regular with their preparation. Now, as for the mode of our classes, most of our life classes would be on the weekends. That will ensure that students, whether working, not working in college, can attend the life classes and the timings does not clash. There would be certain live classes or on weekdays as well, primarily in the initial stages to ensure that preparation, uh, that syllabus is being covered at a good pace. We intend to complete the syllabus from our part around first week of May itself. So basically from 7th May to 7th August is what we are targeting right now. Now the focus of the live classes is basically to ensure that the students studying for a particular paper in a particular batch have all the adequate concepts. It could be that we are teaching primarily in a particular session for a paper, paper A concepts. It could be paper B concepts. It could be question solving, doubt clearing. Point is wherever the students who are studying from us in a particular session are facing issues in, the live classes would be, you know, focusing on them so that these, uh, you know, concerns or these doubts, queries are resolved and we can Make sure that a student has a pretty good learning experience, not just from exam clearing point of view, but also from the point of view of being able to understand the concepts and the ability to apply them in the ever changing, you know, real world scenarios. We always motivate students or we always push students to start early. I personally feel that starting early is one of the most underrated things uh, in the eyes of others, but something which is extremely impactful. To promote that, we are having attractive early bird offers for ones who are enrolling for the classes by April end. These are customized on an individual basis depending on which papers they have cleared, which papers they are planning to give. So in case you are planning to start your preparation under our guidance, do join us today for a meaningful, impactful and wonderful learning experience. So overall, students did find the CV1 paper to be you know, similar to past years, not very difficult, not very easy. As usual, most of them tended to struggle with developing the required number of points for five marks, especially uh, the long questions, the 20 marks one as well. So in this particular video, we shall be discussing the indicative solutions or let's say, you know, the potential solutions for the MCQ part. So starting from question one, which of the following explains why companies have systems of internal control, external auditors recommend controls, internal controls prevent board fraud, Staff might make errors or commit fraud. Uh, stock exchange rules require controls. So option C, you know, staff might make errors or they might commit fraud. So therefore the company should have system of internal control. 
Then question number two, in what sense does the stock market serve as a performance monitor of a quoted company? So I think it should be option C, the share price response to management decisions and that could be used to indicate how the market is uh, perceiving the way, let's say, a particular company is performing. Then next question number three, who should be responsible for the recruitment and appointment of a replacement if a quoted company standard director resigns? So usually I guess this could be the board of directors, but over here that is not the option given. So I guess under these circumstances, option A seems to be the most likely one, a committee of executive directors. Maybe it could be the chief executive officer option C as well, but I guess it should be mostly A. Then question number four, a quoted company has appointed the same individual to serve as both chief executive officer and chair. Why is such an appointment often regarded as undesirable? Because, uh, you know, one person will have too much power. So I feel it should be option B. Again, do keep in mind, these are just the indicative solutions, which I feel to be correct. Some of them you know, might not be correct because it's very tricky depending on how the examiners or the ones who have sent the paper perceive it, they might have given some other alternate option. And in case you know, we come up with any alternate uh, solutions, we would be putting that in the comments section as well. So ones who are in this video, don't forget to view the comments section as well in case any rectifications has been put. Moving forward, question five, peer-to-peer -peer lending enables individuals to make loans through a peer-to-peer -peer lending platform. How are lenders advance protected against default? Lenders can take legal action in the event of default. In six part, uh, five part A looks to be the most sensible one to me. Then moving forward to question six, which of the following explains why tax law often makes a taxpayer's main private residence free from capital gains tax? Option A, taxpayers would refuse to pay. Uh, doesn't make sense. I mean, people will be forced to pay even if they don't pay, legal action will be taken on them. Part B, in order to encourage home ownership, that might be the case. The government might want everyone to at least have one home as to ensure stability with respect to their housing. They are getting proper shelter and all. So it could be option B. C, we have not all taxpayers are homeowners. Doesn't make sense. D, the tax could easily be avoided by renting. So again, D could also be the case, you know, if uh, there is capital gains tax on their own housing, some of them might take to renting. But overall, I'll, I'll see, you know, option B to be the most sensible one. Then question seven, a company undertaking a major construction project has ensured against the risk of accidental injury to construction workers. Which type of risk management does the insurance policy cover? So it's nothing but basically risk transfer. It is transferring the risk to the insurance company. Then question eight, insurance company financial statement requirements, premium receipt, so on. This, in my understanding, should be the matching concept. Then question number nine. Uh, so here it's coming out to be option D, intangible assets are unlikely to have value if the company fails. And finally, question 10, which of the following describes creative accounting? So it's nothing but option A, figures are biased without breaking the rules. So hope that you all did find this video useful. Don't forget to like to this video and as well as, you know, subscribe to our YouTube channel to stay updated regarding all future you know, educational content we would be releasing. Thanks everyone.